What is up guys? In this video, I'm going to be going over what makes you a pro coder versus what makes you code like a noob. So the first tip is when you have a bug, the first thing you should always do is go to Google. You should type it in there. You should do as much research as possible. It's okay to go to Stack Overflow, but what makes you a noob is when you post it on Stack Overflow or you post it in the YouTube comment section down below and you wait for a response without doing anything while it's there. Because time is very precious as a programmer and getting a response can take days if you post it on Stack Overflow and on YouTube, it can even take weeks. It really takes a lot of time if you just rely on other people. Professional tip number two, if you happen to find a solution for your code, do not stop at the first piece of code you find that makes your program work. What makes you a good programmer is that you continuously try to improve the code you have and you continuously look at new solutions that can help improve your code, make it faster and more reliable. If you just stop at the first piece of code that you copy or the first piece of code that you learn, you're going to have a lot of trouble later with trying to innovate. Moving on to professional tip number three. So every time you write a piece of code that happens to work, most of the time you'll probably just leave it as it is because if it works, a very general rule is to not touch it. And in a way, I kind of disagree with that logic because there's so much to learn from your code and if you don't really know what it does, then chances are that in the near future, you're going to run into something that's going to waste your time once again, like the program that you just worked on. So if you understand how you can rewrite a piece of code, how you can innovate it, you're going to have a much easier time in the future when creating some new code. The fourth tip is that you need to code consistently. It happens very often that you might take a break from coding, but these breaks can often lead to something more destructive, like longer breaks. Coding consistently is very important, even if you just code five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day, just to keep your head into the mentality of coding is important because it will keep your flow going. A noob mistake is just to code once a week or once every two weeks because that way you will probably never remember anything essential and it's always gonna be very hard to restart. So you definitely want to get a flow going with some consistent coding. Moving on to coding tip number five, Pretend you just learned how to do something in your favorite programming language, which could either be Java, Python, or Kotlin. You should not limit yourself to only doing something like that in one language. The most important part that you'll learn in coding is the concepts. So if you understand how a messaging system works, it doesn't matter which language you use in the future because you'll know that you'll be able to do it in any language you want. A very beginner mistake is copying code line by line, word for word, and that way you're not really learning the concept, you're just learning what the language does in that specific order. And the problem with this is you'll very soon find out that there's this thing called deprecation, which means the code that you used yesterday will not work today because it may seem as a big surprise, but technology is advancing every single day, which means a majority of the time you're going to see old technology be pushed out and new technology be pushed in because it is much faster, more efficient and more reliable. So I definitely recommend you learn the concepts more than you learn the language because in my example, I can program in any language you can mention because I understand the concepts and I'm not going to create a Android application in Python because I know that's going to be tedious. But if I had to do that, I could do that because I understand how it works underneath the hood. In other words, it's very important you understand the concepts and then decide which language you're going to use based on the efficiency. Pro tip number six, you should never blame others for your code not compiling. You need to understand that deep down, it is 100% your problem. And that is the quickest way to come to a solution for your code. Because if you blame others, you only create more problems. Your computer may be stupid when it comes to trying to understand what you wrote, but it is very fast and efficient when you write things in a way that it can understand. And it's pure logic. So if the computer does not compile something that you wrote, it's probably because you did not write something that was logical. So definitely remember that if there's a problem with your code, chances are it's your problem and not the computer and not someone else's problem. Pro tip number seven, you should always learn from the bugs that you encounter. You should not rely on other people to fix those bugs for you because you will not learn the lesson. Sometimes you can save hours or even days if someone else solves the bug for you but the biggest lessons you learn in coding come from the errors. And the more errors you encounter, the more professional you become as a programmer. I've had to deal with a lot of stupid errors, such as missing a semicolon, and that sometimes could take an hour to two hours 
in the past and I learned very valuable lessons due to these bugs because I spent the time to look into them, I spent the time to research them. And now at this point, of course, I still encounter bugs every single day, but every time I see the bug, I already know what I'm going to try first. I already know how to read the error message and I already know all of the possible situations that could lead to this bug. So it has improved my performance in typing and coding by a lot. And this is only because I spent my own time to research into the bug. Moving on to pro tip number eight. Everyone knows that you can write code and that you can always shorten the amount of lines of code needed to write a single piece of logic. But to be a true professional, you need to understand that you need to maintain a readability because funny enough, we can't all read code the same way as one another. It's very important you learn how to compromise between code efficiency and readability because one day a human is probably going to have to read this code and as beautiful as your code may seem, if it only looks like ones and zeros, it's not going to be easy for anyone to look at, making it very hard to maintain in the future. Unless of course you are the only coder in your company, it is very important you learn how to compromise between readability and efficiency because no matter how short you write the code one day if someone has to look at it it's going to waste a lot of time so i definitely recommend you write your code more in a readable way rather than a very concise way and the final tip i'll give for this video is that you should start small and grow your way up to bigger projects because if you start with a facebook app for example you're going to learn that there are billions of different components that are required to make this app actually function. So if you start from the ground up, you'll learn that there's a, you'll start learning that there's a network component, that there is a database in the background, that there is server space required, and that there are a lot of components that are required to build a Facebook app, for example. So definitely remember to start small and end big because one of the biggest mistakes you make jumping into programming is starting big. Some people just think that, you know, Facebook is doing so great, I might as well make my own Facebook app. So they start learning coding. But the problem is there are so many errors you're going to encounter. There are so many problems that even professionals are still working on today. So you just need to make sure to take this slowly and build your way up because it is a very slow and long process to actually get to the point that you can create your own Facebook app. You need to also think that there are hundreds or even thousands of employees working at Facebook. So it's not just a simple project, but of course it shouldn't take more than a few months if you're dedicated to build a mock Facebook app with a few users and a few messaging systems. You can do it of course, but I just recommend you start from the bottom and slowly build your way to the more complicated apps such as Facebook. But with that being said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Those were some of the major tips I could think of that differentiate a noob from a pro coder. So of course, if you have any examples or any advice you'd like to leave in the comment section below, go for it. I absolutely love reading whatever tips and advice you guys have. So definitely feel free to do that. And otherwise, as always, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. 21 e 17. Crisp.